Hey guys, today we're going to talk about six rules to heal your broken heart. If you've been through a breakup or even a situationship, a breakup through with a friend, with a family member or a romantic breakup, this video is going to be very useful for you because I'm going to give you six very simple, concrete, clear steps that you need to follow to move on. And these steps work. I've tried them on myself, I've tried them on my clients, on my friends, I give it to everyone and they always work. I just want to mention that it's not going to be a super fast process. So, you know, any video that you see on the internet that is like a quick fix, that's bullshit. It's not quick, it takes time, it's a process, it's different for everyone. I can't give you a timeline, you know, for some people it's a week, for some people it's a month, for some people it's six months, you know, but the m deeper you go in this process and, you know, you commit to doing these steps, the quicker the process will be and the pain will go away, I promise. So, rule number one, stop the endless question loop. What does this mean? When we break with, when we break up with someone, we start asking a lot of questions about them, about their relationship, about what they think. What did they do that? What did they mean? Oh, they texted me that. It could mean that. But if that, then then. Blah, 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 blah. So basically, when you ask a question and it brings up another question, that's your sign that you should stop because you're entering a vicious question loop, right? So just accept that you're never going to find out the answer. You're never going to be able to fully understand what's going on in that person's mind. You know, unless they're extremely good at communicating and very self-aware and they are able to understand themselves and are open to communicating to you all of these things, which would be ideal. Uh, in most cases, they don't even understand what they're feeling and what's happening to them and you know why they're making the decisions they're making because a lot of these things are influenced by traumas from our childhood and your decisions as well many times when someone will ask you like why did you do that you won't really be able to explain you know or why did you say that why did you do that so stop the endless question loop it's not helping you it's not helping you this brings me to my second point which is the reason why you're doing this, the reason why you're asking so many questions, the reasons you're creating these fantasies and scenarios about this person in your head, which are normal, by the way, everyone does that. But why you're doing that is because you're trying to create a sense of, to keep, rather said, to keep a sense of connection to them. But it's a false sense of connection. So by thinking about them, our mind believes that we're still connected to them, right? Because if you don't think about them, if you like move on, then you break the connection. So it's a way that we, you know, falsely feel connected to this person, you know, creating scenarios like we're talking to them and so on, which sometimes can be therapeutic, you know, it will allow you to get closure, having a conversation in your mind with this person, telling them everything you need to tell or writing a letter, you know, maybe you imagine that they're replying to you. It can be good, but if you're doing this too much, it can become very unhealthy and, you know, turn into like an obsession kind of thing and you won't actually be able to move on. So it's important to understand you're trying to get a sense of connection. And what are you going to do with this information? Well, the truth is you're lonely and you're feeling empty. You feel that emptiness inside of you and you're trying to fill it in because that's your only reference to what love and connection, you know, a relationship means basically. So naturally, because for the past period of time you've been going to this person for connection your mind will go there but you need to teach your mind reprogram your mind that instead of going to this person for connection which is a human need that everyone has you need to go to other sources okay ideally and the best source of connection is yourself but i know that in this moment it's very hard to do that so let's be realistic here right you're gonna go to other people and that's the easiest way for the beginning 
If you have friends, if you have family members you can talk to, ideal. If you have a dog, if you, you know, have a community like baseball, basketball, volleyball, whatever, dance community, you know, go to some groups, talk to people, interact with people. Connection is super important and a sense of community. And don't underestimate the power of superficial interactions as well. Like, you know, talking to the lady at the shop, talking to someone on the street, you know, simple things like being in a park and saying, oh my God, that's such a cute dog. What breed is it? You know, stuff like that. It really makes us feel like we're less lonely and it makes us feel like we're part of this bigger community. And right now, this is essential because this is what you're missing the most. All right. Third rule is a lot of memories and feelings and questions are going to arise. Completely normal again. So I also want to normalize everything that's going on with, within you. So you don't think, am I going crazy? Am I going insane? No, you're normal. Uh, everyone, almost everyone is like that. Okay. So the moment they arise, that's normal, you know, memories about the breakup, the bad things that happen, you know, certain questions. You can't stop them for now. You can't stop them from coming up. What's really important is what you do with them once they come up. Okay, this feeling or this uh, memory came up. Most people will go down the roof, will go down that path of that memory, and they will get again in that vicious loop of questions, emotions, feeling angry and upset and so on. So it's super important that you train your mind that after it comes up, you stop. You don't go down that path, you know, try to like have certain um, anchors for yourself that you do, for instance, certain things that you can tell yourself or that you can do once these things come up. Like maybe you can say, OK, I don't have the question for this. I don't have the answer for this. Um, and I'm going to be OK. I'm safe, you know pull back your shoulders, open your eyes, look around you, say, okay, I'm in my room right now, or this is where I am. I'm in the present moment. They're not here with me. This is my life right now. And I'm safe. I'm there next to me. Super important thing that we're going to get into as well is healing that child inside of you, because that's a big part. Basically, when you break up with someone is like, that little child inside of you feels abandoned. A lot of times the emotions you feel are not from the present. You probably, if you experience more breakups, you know that you probably have very similar feelings of being abandoned, of, you know, frustration, sadness, anger, and so on. Um, and it's because a lot of times these feelings are not from the present, they come from your childhood. So it's super important that you make that inner child feel safe and that they're not abandoned, that you are there next to them. And you can do this through visualization exercises, writing letters and so on. OK, all right. Rule number four is super important when emotions such as sadness, anger, grief, super important grief because when we break up with someone it's like losing someone it's like someone died literally um when these emotions come up you don't suppress them especially at the beginning um you can move on unless you let yourself grieve and be sad a lot of people will try to avoid their feelings uh, will try to go out as much as possible and never be by themselves. They will try to, you know, like uh, go on a hundred dates, install dating apps and go on many dates, do drink, uh, do drugs, whatever, you know, like each, each person has their own um, protection mechanisms and coping mechanisms. It's important that you don't ignore these feelings because they will still be there. And they won't go away unless you allow yourself to feel them. This is a super important point, and I don't understand why more people don't realize this. Feelings come and go. No emotion is permanent. You know, you feel sad now, but you're not going to feel sad forever. You feel this now, but 
you know, biologically, we're programmed to change our emotions. You can't feel the same thing your whole life. It's just not how our biology works. It's literally impossible. And I promise you, what you're feeling now is not going to last forever. And you've probably noticed, since you broke up with this person, that your feelings changed anyways, because our body, our biology needs diversity. We, we can't feel the same thing for an extended period of time. Our body needs to change, it needs variety. So once you actually allow yourself to consume these feelings, to leave the sadness, you know, to cry it out, to cry your eyes out until there's no tears left, you know, they will still be there. So it's super important that you actually allow yourself to grieve and mourn and leave all of these emotions. Because I promise they will go away. All right? Are we at rule number? Yes. Rule number five. I have a list down. I'm, I just keep looking up and down. Rule number five is start with small things. Okay? So especially if it was an extremely painful breakup and you're going through a really traumatizing period of your life and you feel like you're not functional, it's super important that you start with small things. So a lot of people are not going to sleep properly, are not going to eat properly, are not going to get out of the house and walk, are not going to, you know, do any kind of exercise. Some people don't even go to work, you know, like they'll take a leave. It's important that you start small. You start by sleeping, you start by eating, taking care of your most essential basic needs, just like you would take care of a little baby. You know, make sure you eat properly and healthy food and good food. Make sure that you take yourself out on a walk. Make sure that, you know, you, we need, you know we need connection. Make sure you force yourself to interact with some people, to hug someone, even a pet, you know? Um, to get out of the house, to do an activity. Start with really small steps. And this takes me to rule number six, and in time it will get easier. Rule number six, and this is kind of like towards the end of the process, once you're feeling more functional and better about yourself and you actually have some energy to do certain things, you start focusing on a goal. The best thing you can do for yourself is to have something, something meaningful that you're working towards. So, you know, it can be even, it doesn't have to be saving the world or the most, the biggest goal in your life. It can be working out in the gym and getting your, your ideal body, you know, like uh, having a plan, having a goal, having a meaning and working on that. You know, it can be starting a new project a social media account, a small business you've always wanted to start. So, but of course, this won't happen from the beginning. You need to have the resources to do so and a little bit of motivation and energy. But trust me, once you start feeling that you're working towards something and there's some sort of meaning, because that's one of the big things you lost, was like a future perspective because your whole future was built around this person and now you lost it. So now it's like, I don't know where I am. I don't see the future. It's important that you start seeing it again and you start recreating it. Okay, what does my future look like? Where do I want to be in six months? Okay, how can I get there? And it's like being super like, you know, logical and rational, making a plan and working towards it. And you know, I said previously, super important to leave your emotions and let themselves be consumed. But it's also super important that at certain points, you are actually, you know, like you detach a little bit from everything that's happening. You have this capacity to sometimes just dissociate and dissociation is not always bad. I know that you've probably heard that it's bad, but it's not always bad. Sometimes it's extremely good because if we keep staying in that whole mess, you know, we can get out a little bit, take a step back and look at ourselves and our lives and actually do something. So, you know, there are certain techniques that can help you, give you some energy to actually do something, take initiative in your life, like imagining yourself six months after the breakup, after you've healed, for instance. This is a technique that a lot of people use that I tell my clients to use sometimes. Um, you know, they will 
you basically you close your eyes and you imagine what am I going to feel after six months? Um, imagine what your life looks like after you've moved on. You know, who are the people around you? What activities are you doing? What have you built? You know, stuff like that. So that can help you, you know, give you that push of motivation to actually do something. So these are the six rules that you need to follow to heal your broken heart. And again, it doesn't have to be only about a romantic partner. It can be anyone, a friend, a family member, anyone. Okay. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or anything you want to say, just write it down in the comments. Let me know if this video was helpful and share it with someone if you think this video might be helpful for them as well. Lots of love. Bye.